The healthcare sector is about to be hacked. Hacked? By who? While large organizations are relaxing, believing their foundations are solid, a legion of adjacent disruptors from other industries are ready to change things forever. They're nimble. And they're targeting the niche markets. Hundreds of new players are coming, and your profits are their opportunity. The gaps in your market are their entry points. These are now your real competitors. But, despite them, this year, my company launched the new innovation center that helped boost our revenues. You're not telling me anything I don't already know. But what is coming is something totally different. When this smart revolution ends, six out of every 10 hospitals will morph into urgent care, retail, or a virtual health entity. Six out of 10. That would be a massive change. Karen, you are looking at a key moment in the history of medicine. Frank Rossetti, a player on the MIT Engineers University team, will get a spinal cord injury in the middle of the game. Oof, that looks nasty. On that very day, his classmates will organize a cyber campaign for research and new therapies for Rossetti. Frank Rossetti will be the first person in the world to recover from an injury thanks to regenerative medicine. Later, the Nobel Prize for Medicine will be awarded to an artificial intelligence creation called Dinah. Dinah will be the one who cures the greatest enemy of humanity, cancer. It's Dinah's processing and deep learning that will find a cure for cancer by cross-referencing billions of online digital records, DNA samples and healthcare data. That's billions upon billions of processes. Then we can do anything. Thanks to deep learning in genomics, the acceptance rate for transplants will rise to 90%. Personalized medication will be quickly and easily designed for each individual patient. d printers not only this in fact this device is an on-demand pharmaceutical 3d printer in the future the dna sequence for every person will be available to doctors and lab techs so they can quickly find any anomaly and generate the prescription to cure and fix it people will then be able to print their personalized medication at home it's like science fiction. And yet, it is only science without the fiction. Do you know what the greatest challenge will be? Honestly, my mind boggles with the possibilities. Why don't you show me? In just a few years, more than 2 billion human genome sequences will be stored. This will grow by more than 40 exabytes of data each year. All this health data will be stored and virtualized in huge data centers around the world. Our biggest challenge will be finding the investment for all this technology. A hospital. I want to see what a hospital of the future looks like. I think one of the really important milestones that we reached as a society is to get rid of pre-existing conditions and to make it possible that every member could be insured one way or the other. But we have a whole new cascade of technology coming toward us. What, what are we doing about that? Just not only as Harvard Pilgrim, the local business, but as a society overall.
What are the main challenges? One of the biggest challenges that we have is that in general, health insurance and to some extent health is a low interest category. And I would just use as an example, people buy health insurance, but they don't really know what that means. If we look at the experiences of members buying insurance through the exchanges, we know that what they're looking at is typically what their premium is, and maybe what maybe they're looking at what their deductible is, but they're not really looking at their total out-of-pocket exposure. And they don't understand how their benefits work. And this is a real challenge that we are going to tackle head-on on a go-forward basis. Technology is key in this new era of healthcare. How will it affect the industry of medicine? Are we going to prolong life or eliminate illness? In the end, it's all about the patient, right? So as we look forward, I would agree people are living longer. Technology continues to evolve. There's more that we can do with that technology. I put pharma in that same category. Those are costs that just are additive and additive. And I think what we need to figure out is, well, what are we doing on the other side to control costs? What are the things that could be done that aren't being done? And in those categories, I would put things like telemedicine, uh, uh, appropriate level of service center and care. You know, at, if I were a young parent today, and I could use technology to look into my kid's ear when they're screaming at two o'clock in the morning and know that they have an earache, or I could follow a protocol like they're working on at Children's Hospital to figure out when I should really take the baby to the hospital. Those are things that could dramatically reduce cost on the other side. So I think this is really a balancing act. One side of cost is definitely going to continue to increase. We want the best technology. We want access to the best care. But on the other side, we really need to think about the appropriate provision and site of service for the care that's needed. And I think that technology could make a significant improvement to ensuring the appropriateness of those things.